and today we'll be talking about the part two of the Napoleon Bonaparte. So yeah, let's get started with the Napoleon Bonaparte. Now, this today, Napoleon is somehow going to escape from his island of Corsica. I've exiled from Corsica and back to France. Now, as I mentioned in the last video, France is about here. If it's about this size, Corsica should be uh, about right here. Right here. Right? And so it would be easy to come from there to here, right? So why can't he just do it? And that's exactly what he did. So yeah, he there was a French ship there who was gonna meet him, and then he secretly told him to disguise it as a British ship when the British were sleeping. So they did, they did. They copied every movement, every detail of a ship of a British ship. And now Paul Sicklin went there, and then he secretly, and that British ship just went away back to France. But the British thought it was gonna go to Britain. Oh yeah, when uh, Napoleon returned to France, he was popular. He was popular by the whole military people. And also all the commoners, all the wealthy people always thought that he might help. Because a lot of people were invading their country to like make, make a king, a new king instead of Napoleon. <coughs> yeah, so Napoleon reclaimed his position and then, and then he just like, hey! I'm the emperor now, and he son and then he somehow convinces troops to come back to him, to yet yeah, to come back to him and also be loyal to him. Yeah, loyal. <laughs> and yeah, they they decided to be loyal because it would be better. And then, and then, well, yeah, they kind of lost the battle, but we're not into that yet. <laughs> so when Napoleon. Came back to came back to France to reclaim his position. He was honored by two things. He was pretty nice with all of these two things, and also he would start his Napoleonic Wars again. However, there was a sudden collision coming on. There were like there were six collisions before Napoleon was exiled to Elba, to to Corsica and Elba, Corsica Elba, and uh, and yeah, Elba. That was where he was exiled to. I'm sorry, Corsica was his birthplace. I've been giving you a misunderstanding for now. It was actually that the correction is Elba, as it says in the palindrome from the last episode. <laughs> Elba was I, El I saw Elba. That should be my remember. <laughs> okay, moving on. Now, now you might say Napoleon might uh, might be able to get out of his exile again, yeah? But he isn't in exile again. If he ever done, he might be able to, yeah? So yeah, first he went to the Egyptians to make another empire, and then he found a lot of gnarly Egyptian chart, like the Rosetta Stone, some hieroglyphs. But then later the British found him, led by Nelson, Captain Nelson, no, not Nelson Mandela, not the South African guy. Nelson, British Nelson Commander Nelson. And, and, and he destroyed the French fleet without Napoleon, and then Napoleon abandoned his soldiers back to France. He was pretty popular at back and and then he started going for a dictatorship. The day when he was crowned, he said to the Pope, No one crowns Napoleon except himself and then he crowned himself <coughs> as the new emperor and emperor of France. An empire of course. Later he made more empire, but he never been able to expand his dream of making the whole European Empire. He made it he made all almost all the countries in Europe except the Balkan states <coughs> Balkan states and of course Britain. Because he does not have a pretty strong navy. He does not have a pretty strong navy. So he could not afford to fight with Britain on the navy uh, with the Royal Navy. And yeah, that's basically a lot of strategies that Napoleon is. He always calculates his moves. And then one day, he he fought at Russia and Moscow. And then with no soldiers to protect Moscow. However, the winter was a soldier. So a lot of people, when Napoleon retreated, he lost almost like like 90% of his soldiers. And all of his 10% were like bad temperatures. And some of, the, like about half of those people, like 5% of them were about to be, were likely to die. So yeah, they died and now he has only 5% of his army. Well, that's a dang. 
and then later he he made more soldiers. He got more soldiers who were like ninety five percent inexperienced in fighting, and they fought in the Battle of Waterloo. They were pretty. They knew a lot of fighting skills, so so yeah, that was lucky. However, when they reached to Waterloo, they tried to fight each other. But this was the time when Napoleon made the, the next miscalculation. And yeah, this was what he did. This was what he did. He was like lost the Waterloo Battle of Waterloo, and he was exiled again. He might say again to like Elba, but no, this time a farther away place. And this is called Saint Helena. Saint Helena is in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, in the, like the middle of nowhere. If France is right here, this is the exact size of it. If France was right here, then Saint then Saint Helena should be right here. Well, down to my waist. If France was on my head, then then Saint Helena should be on my waist. That's how far, so far it is. It's in the middle of nowhere. And but however, it took a few days to journey, and I guess Napoleon could not be escaped. He couldn't, could not escape. And when he reached Saint to Saint Hela, he never even dared to do the British to the skies again because, because, if he tried to go on for shipping for miles again, his troop might die, and get conquered by the Royal Navy. Yeah, he's not gonna risk it. However, he played some chess games there, and that's and then one day he and one day he was playing a chess, and then like he has a microchip in the brain. He won. He won. He checkmated the black king. He was white. He checkmated the black king. Yeah. This was the best thing that might have happened to Napoleon winning, and this was his strategy stuff. <laughs> strategy. Now, yeah, this might become a bit kind of like arrangement of this, and I have to say that this was a bit particularly true. And also later, later in Saint Helena. Saint Helena, Napoleon Bonaparte will die there, and he he will be first buried in Saint Helena. But then his grave will be dug and returned to France, and then he will be buried there, buried under there, and with a monument to mark it. And that monument is public today. Yeah, then, well, that ends the bonus of our show. Oh, and also bonus learning: palindromes. Now, if you remember from the last episode, we talked about Abel was I, El I saw El Oops, okay. Abel was I, El I saw El back. Yeah, this was a palindrome. Now, palindromes let me explain the numbers. Like how, like I said in the earlier episode, like when Abel, well, palindromes when spelled backwards in a sentence, they will they will say the same thing forwards. Like, like, go hang a salami. I'm a lasagna dog. When you spell that backwards, it says the same thing. Go hang a salami. I'm a lasagna dog. I mean, sorry, hog. So yeah. So and if you explain palindromes and numbers, it'll be like one, two, three, four, three, two, one, or one, two, three, two, one, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, huh? and until hundred, and then starting from ninety nine, ninety eight, ninety seven, and so on until you get to one. So yeah, palindromes can be that long. Or like, like a quin Google, one to Google and then Google back to one. <coughs> yeah, those are all palindromes. Now one, two, three, four, five, one is not a palindrome, because there's no pattern in it. There's no middle in it. Like, Abel was I, El I saw El back. So this is one, two, three, four, one, two, three. One. So yeah, this one, this palindrome is a one, two, three, four, three, two, one, because it's like this. <coughs> Abel was I L I saw L but let me try again. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. So this one is a one, two, three, four, three, two, one palindrome. And that's how we address number address palindromes in in palindroming. Now <laughs> yeah. Now or, or, now how I remember the name of palindromes, it's it's pretty easy to symbolize, but I just want to like a quick reminder for those who can't memorize pretty quickly. I just think of the word drone. A drone. Because it has the word drone in palindrome. So palindromes as I said explain in numbers and also I'll also 
uh, also say all of these things that I just wrote are gonna be probably published in history and also if you, whoever watching this please subscribe to my channel hit the like button and share this button to everyone else and hit the little bell icon to all our notifications so you will then get up so you will get updated in the next video and I'll see you next time Turn hand out and zoom out.